<laughs> I just fooled you because I'm going for the big one today. So let's put on my gloves and drive. Yeah, well, that's the V8 sound. In 2011, Dodge and its sub-brands, Dodge Ram and Dodge Viper, were separated. But in this episode from Drying with Gloves, I am going to present to you a Ram, when it was still a Dodge Ram, and look how huge it is. And since it is that huge, the mighty V8 is always hungry for petrol. And since that I am huge myself, I am always hungry for food. That's why I'm going to eat first a delicious sandwich here in Agno in Switzerland at Simon Food. Grazie, Simone. Mmm, that tastes so good. Hi, my name is Cor, and welcome to my channel, Driving with Gloves. I always drive with car gloves. Your question might be, why do I drive with gloves? And my answer is, why not? When you listen to music, you must understand that it was especially composed for the Dodge Brothers. It is called the Dodge Brothers March. Dodge was founded by the Dodge Brothers in 1900. Dodge was originally a supplier of parts to Detroit-based car makers. There was a lawsuit in 1916 between Henry Ford and the Dodge Brothers. Henry Ford admitted that the entire T Ford, the Tin Lizzie, except the wheels and the design, was built by the Dodge Brothers. The Dodge Brothers were the two best mechanics in Michigan. They owned 10% of the Ford Motor Company stock. They began building complete automobiles under the Dodge Brothers brand in 1914. In 1920, both Dodge Brothers died, but the Dodge brand endured multiple ownership changes. On some Dodge pickup trucks from the 1930s, there was a ram hood ornament, but it took Dodge until model year 1981 to replace the D-series name on pickup trucks by Dodge Ram. Exactly 30 years later, in 2011, the Dodge Ram name was replaced by simply Ram. Rationally, it makes absolutely no sense to drive such a big car on these narrow streets. But, emotionally, it's just fun. Arias Musiman. No, I'm not impersonating the Pope by trying to speak Latin. It is just the Latin word for the European mouflon, which is the ancestor of the domestic sheep. 
The meal is called ram, so am I just driving a bloody sheep today? Well, let's find out if this Dodge Ram is domestic or if it is wild. In any case, I will keep on my gloves in case that it is wild. To understand what does the ram symbolize, we must look into some of its characteristics. The sheep were among the first domesticated animals and ever since, they had a great influence on human history and culture. The sheep's symbolic meaning is an emblem of peace, docility and the ability to accept higher authority guidance. However, if the sheep's symbolism is associated with tenderness, the ram symbol stands among the animals that represent strength, and this ram has a huge strength, but it follows my order, so it is more or less domesticated like a sheep. The home of the ram is high upon the rocky edges and abrupt cliffs. The ram leaps among slippery terrain and makes his conquest known by wearing his majestic horns like a crown. So let's find out if this Dodge Ram Hemi 5.7 liter is all what the Ram symbolizes. The first generation Rams were faceless versions of the previous generation Dodge D series pickups introduced in 1972 and they were built until 1993. The second generation Dodge Ram was looking way more modern. It actually looked from the front a bit like the animal. But today I'm driving the third generation Dodge Ram. The 1500 Hemi with a 5.7 liter V8 engine with a power output of 350 PS. But what on earth is a Hemi engine? A hemispherical combustion chamber is a type of combustion chamber in a reciprocating internal combustion engine with a domed cylinder head in the approximate shape of a hemisphere. An engine featuring this type of hemispherical chamber is known as a Hemi engine. But let's have a look at the engine. Although it's a huge engine, it seems small within this car. The engine is a 5.7 liter Hemi Magnum 16 valve V8. It has eight cylinders in a 90 degrees V type setup and it is liquid cooled. The 5.7 liter engine has a displacement of 5,654 cc, which is 345 cubic inch. It has a power output of 350 PS, which is 345 bhp or 257 kilowatt at 5400 rpm, and it delivers 508 newton meters or 375 foot-pound of torque at 4200 rpm. The third generation Dodge Ram was hugely popular. It was built between 2002 and 2009 and I'm driving a 2005 model today. Although the second generation was already a huge success, the third generation was even a bigger success. In 2002, there were sold 400,000 vehicles and in 2003, even 450,000. Dodge did not want to change the successful concept of the second generation, so they kept to the same concept. The grille became even bigger and the windscreen was more flat. Further, the fenders were more exposed. The torsion stiffness of the third generation was 400% stiffer than from the second generation. So how is it to drive? Actually, it is not driving bad in any way. I know that it is always said that American cars are poor driver's cars. Well, this isn't. Because you can't expect it to be a precise driving sports car, can you? It has its flaws nonetheless. The biggest flaw is its gigantic size, 
With this floor is also its biggest advantage, because you feel like Gulliver, and even the SUV society here in Switzerland is getting submissive. Every Porsche Cayenne and every Range Rover treats you with enormous respect. But as I said, this biggest advantage is also a big flaw. Parking this truck is horrible. Normally speed bumps are a disaster with any car, but with this car you don't even feel them. It's even quite fun to drive over speed bumps. The biggest flaw of the car is its enormous turning circle of 14 meters. On these narrow roads, it is sometimes not possible to take the curves without backing up. It is more that the other traffic is annoying in these situations, because people in small cars mostly need the most space. But on the other hand, it's such a fun car to drive. Another thing you have to take into account with this Dodge Ram is that it is not only big but also very heavy, so you need to fill it up with petrol on a regular basis. The Dodge SRT10 was even mentioned by Guinness as the world's fastest pickup truck. It had the 8.3 litre V10 engine from the Dodge Viper. The 5.7 litre Hemi version I'm driving today has only 350 PS, so 150 PS less than the SRT1. Yeah, this is such a cool car. This is really cool. This is big. Really big. But enough about how it drives. Let's have a look at the interior. If you buy this kind of cars, you must understand something. It is not the kind of interior you will find in a luxury sports car. If you compare a luxury sports car with a horse, it would be an Arabian horse. But if you compare the Ram with a horse, it would be a draft horse. But the interior looks very fine from this perspective. You can even fold the back seats to have more luggage space within the cabin. There is also the possibility to open the rear window. There is a lot of storage space between the front seats as well. And you can operate the buttons even with gloves on. The funny thing is that you can find the RAM emblem everywhere. Thank you very much for watching this episode from Driving with Gloves with this enormous Dodge Ram 1500 Hemi 5.7 litre V8 
from 2005 in the Radnag edition. This car is actually for sale at Simon Car in Agno in the south of Switzerland. I want to thank Simone Livare especially for lending me this car today. I hope to see you soon in a new episode from Driving with Gloves. And until then, do not forget to like this video and to subscribe to my YouTube channel Driving with Gloves. See you soon in a new episode from Driving with Gloves.